Office Wife. The story of the girl who married her boss and of the girl who took over. Here is Marcia Pilgrim, introducing another chapter of Office Wife. I'm on my way to the Pelican Club. Oh, if only this confounded taxi man would get a move on. Last night, Jeff came home in a rage after finding out that I was behind the choice of little Barbara Fraser for his new secretary. We had a simply dreadful fight. Jeff packed a bag and walked out. I thought he'd get over it, sleep at some hotel for the night, and then calm down. But this time he really means it. Uncle Tressida tried to talk him round today. But Jeff's not only leaving me, he's cleaned out his desk and walked out of the firm. When Uncle Tressida told me, I could have screamed. Especially as Jeff's given me no address or anything. But I made Barbara tell me that he was meeting Stella Bronson at the Pelican. And that's where I'm headed for right now. I'll catch those two. And when I do... Where are you going to, Jeff? Haven't made up my mind yet. I wish you'd tell me just the same. When you do make up your mind. Oh, I'll probably take a few weeks off and work this rotten tangle out. Marcia mightn't want to call our marriage off altogether. Do you mean you consider what she wants? Oh, well, it's the thing, isn't it? What's it like right up on the north coast this time of year? Glorious. Mm, thought I might go up to Davies Harbour or Point McLaughlin. Mm, lucky beast. Yes, aren't I? Wish I could come too. Oh, if only I'd met you first. We'd have had fun, Jeff. Yes, we would. We could have lain in the sun and dived off the decks of motorboats. Where the water's so clear, you can see fish playing right down in the coral. Yeah. We could have danced on terraces, walked under palm trees, or driven in the moonlight with a car top down, and warm night breezes blowing hair in our eyes. Oh, please, Stella. Oh, I can dream dreams. When are you leaving? I'll take an early plane in the morning. When you get to wherever you're going, don't forget. Not for a moment. Can you tell Marcia where you are? No. Jeff, turn round. Hmm? See her? Good Lord, the moment you mentioned her name. And she's seen us. Better get set for something pretty wild and noisy. There won't be any scene. It takes two, remember? Uh, hello, Marcia. Won't you sit down? Jeff, I'd like to speak to you alone. That won't be any trouble, Mrs. Pilgrim. Goodbye, Jeff. Goodbye, Stella. Good luck. What did you want to see her for? I bought her a farewell drink. Farewell? Jeff, I've talked to Uncle Tressida. Yes? Jeff, you can't do it. You can't walk out on me and the firm, too. I won't let you, darling. But I am doing it, Marcia. And it's no use making an uproar. Have a drink? No. Where are you going? I'm not going to tell you. But you can't just go. Oh, Jeff, you can't do that. Not to me. Stick around and watch me. But you're my husband. What if anything happens? I'll be back. Yes, but when? Look, Marcia, I'm simply going away for two or three weeks. Then I'll be back and we can decide... Well, we can decide what's to happen to us. Oh, please, Jeff, don't run away like this. I'm definitely clearing off for a while and that's that. I won't change my mind for anyone. Oh, Jeff, darling, I love you. I'm your wife. Look, there's absolutely no sense in prolonging this. I'm leaving now. Can I get you a cab or anything? Oh, please. If you stay, I promise I'll be different. I can't let you walk out on my life. I can't let you, Jeff. Oh, please don't leave me like this. Jeff, we're married. We're man and wife. I wish you'd thought of that once or twice in the past. You're coming, Marcia? People are staring. Let them stare. Jeff. Are you coming now? All right, please yourself. I'll see you in two or three weeks or so. And until then, well, I wish you the best. 
Cheerio, Les. Sorry it wasn't lovelier being married. It could have been. Couldn't it? Jeff! Oh, darling. Oh, darling. <laughs> Oh, there you are, Harry. Thanks for coming along, Oliver. Well, I could scarcely let you go without buying you a farewell noggin, could I? <laughs> so you're off in the morning. <laughs> Wish I could come too. Yes, that's what Stella said. What are you actually going to do? Get a divorce? No, that's just something that has to work itself out. Listen, old man, do a few things for me, will you? Yes, yeah, sure I will. Anything, you know that. Would you keep an eye on Marcia for me? I'll give you my address while I'm away. I'm booked for three weeks at Daybreak Island. Up on the reef, eh? Uh-huh. So if anything should happen... Such as what? Mm, well, supposing Marcia were taken ill or anything. I'd want to get back at the double. But I don't want anyone else to know where I am, or Marcia and her uncle will come chasing along after yes, me. Yes, of course, but... Um, won't anyone know where you are but me? No one. Not a soul. Not even Stella? What makes you think I'd tip her off? <laughs> I thought that you and she would... Forget it. Now listen, Harry. You'll probably be taking over my accounts. Why, me, if I can give you a hand in any way? <laughs> That's very decent of you, old boy. So there's no chance of you ever coming back with Bendigo's at all, eh? Not unless Marcia and Bendigo come round to my way of thinking completely, admit to me and to Stella that they've been wrong about us, and give me an absolutely free hand. Mm, and I don't suppose that's very likely. I can't see old Bendigo eating humble pie to that extent. Oh, neither can I. Well, here's to you. Good luck, have a good trip, and don't forget to look me up the moment you get back. I shan't. Well, fare thee well, chum. I'm very sorry I was rude to you before, but I was terribly upset. Am I forgiven? Yes, Mrs. Pilgrim. I'm very sorry about all this, too. Now, let's both forget it, Barbara. Uh, about Mr. Pilgrim? Yes? I wonder would you help me a little? Would you? Yes, but what could I do? If my husband should happen to communicate with the office while he's away, would you let me know? Would you, Barbara? Well, yes, but why? Because, well, I hate to have to admit this to anyone, Barbara, but... Well, I don't know where he's going. The telegram or a letter would tell me where he is. From the postmark, that is. You see, I, I'm i interested in where he... But, uh, oh, Mrs. Pilgrim has put me in a horribly awkward position. I don't want to take sides or anything. You wouldn't be taking sides. Oh, yes, I would. If Mr. Pilgrim hasn't told you where he's going, he doesn't want you to know. And yet... You're asking me to to give him away, sort of. Well, I can't do that. I started off by saying I was sorry. I don't want to have to be nasty again, Barbara. How do you mean? Do as I say, or I'll have to ask my uncle to throw you out. You wouldn't want that, would you? I think you're being terribly unfair. Taking advantage of your position to make me do things like this. I don't see why you should take that attitude. And anyhow, that's how it is. You've been my husband's secretary, and it's just possible he might wire you or something. He wouldn't get in touch with me. It would be Mr. Fleming or Mr. Bendigo. It might be you. And if it is? Well, what are you going to do? This is the second time you've threatened me. What are you going to do? What can I do? I'll just have to do as you say, but I, I think it's downright disgraceful, Mrs. Pilgrim. I don't care what you think. That's a good job you've decided to be sensible. And Barbara see that you don't change your mind. Harry Palmer, you're so obvious to me that I'm perpetually amazed at the way you take other people in. What are you cooking up this time? Me? Take people in? Why, Stella, you wound me. You didn't come here to make cute remarks, did you? Not altogether. Listen, Stella, if Jeff divorced Marcia, do you think he might marry you? He might? Yes, I think he might too. Jeff and Marcia are definitely on the rocks right now, darling, but if you want to marry Pilgrim and I want to marry Marcia, wouldn't it be silly to give them a chance to patch it up again? What are you getting at? Well, I bade Geoffrey fare thee well this afternoon. One thing stuck out a mile. He won't ask Marcia for a divorce unless he's pushed into it. And you expect me to do the pushing? <laughs> Why not? Marcia's a funny lass. She's given Jeff hell, but she still wants to stick to him. Funny isn't the word I'd use to describe Marcia. 
I've never been able to figure out whether she really loves the man or whether it's just pure avid possessiveness that makes her tick. Stella, why don't you find out? Now, how could I, of all people, get close enough to Marcia to find out anything This from is her? about the best chance you'll ever get to face Marcia squarely and have it out with her. She's lost her husband through nobody's fault but her own. What's she going to do? Play dog in the manger and keep him tied to her? It's what I'd expect her to do. Yes, but you can't be sure, can you? Isn't it about time we both came into the open and stopped trying to be clever? <laughs> Look where it's got us. Strictly nowhere. But now, by just letting things take their course, Pilgrim's out of the firm and I'm in his place. Now, I want you to go to Marcia. You're on the box seat. You only have to get past Marcia and you'll catch Jeff on the bounce. There's nothing surer. You're thinking of yourself, actually, aren't you, Palmer? Yes, I admit that. But we're in the same boat. What about it now? Oh, if only I could have it out with Marcia. If only I could persuade her to let Jeff go. Isn't it worth a try? And just because I'm such a nice guy, here's a card you can play. Jeff doesn't want Marcia to know where he is because he thinks she and her Uncle Tressida will come trailing after like the bloodhounds in Uncle Tom's cabin. But how is she going to react when she finds out you know where he is and she doesn't? But you silly ass, I don't know where he's gone. Oh, but you do. He's at Daybreak Island. I'm the only person he's told, and it's all yours to make the most of. He's at Daybreak Island for three weeks, so go and tackle Marcia face to face. Will you do it, Stella? I think it would pay. I know I'm only being a cat's paw for Palmer, but why not? What would I do in Marcia's shoes if she came to me and said, You've lost your husband, and I want him. I know what I'd do, but would Marcia? Well, there's only one way to find out. It's all or nothing. So here we go. I think I'll ring her right now. We invite you to listen to further episodes of Office Wife, written by L.J. Hardy, a Donovan Joyce production.